Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. So for the past few weeks, I've been talking to you guys about the different aspects of fear, how it affects you mentally, emotionally, physically, personally, professionally, and how to deal with it and move on from it. I've kind of framed it as a negative thing, but like I said in my video about synchronicity, which you can catch here if you haven't already, it isn't all bad. It actually serves a purpose and can act as a guidepost. The service that it serves depends on the type of fear that we're experiencing. Because the thing is, is that there's two types of fear. There's fear that serves as a survival mechanism and triggers a fight, flight, or freeze response to very real, imminent danger around you. That's real fear. And then there's imagined fear. The first kind of fear is almost always a response to something that's currently, presently happening and it guides you away, to, away from danger, that's its purpose. Whereas the second is always, without fail, in response to something that might happen in the future. Might. <laughs> Your brain basically takes it upon itself to gather all the information that's currently available to it, as well as information that it's gathered from previous experiences, traumatic or not. But the thing is, is that as humans, we were not perfect and we have a bias for the negative, which means that we tend to focus on and magnify the negative, and uh, so and so we allow it to override any other possible interpretation of a scenario, whether it's already happened, it's happening right now, or it will happen. In other words, most of us live under the constant influence and in constant fear of worst case scenarios which aren't full, necessarily fully true and which will probably never happen but because of our belief in them have very real impacts on our health mentally and emotionally and our lives and that's when fear stops being useful but fear in small doses can actually be really useful and really enlightening so let's play pretend for a second let's imagine that you're still a kid or maybe you still are one and you absolutely love sports. It doesn't really, really matter what your favorite is, but the point is, is that you're into them so much that you imagine yourself as a professional athlete one day. And in, in order to reach that, or just because you're of your inherent interest in sports, you find yourself thinking about them all the time, you're going through game day scenarios, you're going through the plays and the drills that you might encounter on the actual game day. And you're so you're so wrapped up in it that you sometimes let your your schoolwork slip because that's not what you care about. You care about your sport. So let me ask you a question. Do you think you'd be more nervous before your championship game? or before taking the final for a class that you don't care about? I'm guessing most, if not all of you, answered that you'd be no more nervous before your championship game because it's what you care about. And since nervousness is an expression of fear, that means that fear can act as a litmus test as to whether or not we care about something. So let's apply this line of thinking to more scenarios. Which conjure up the most fear in you? Losing touch with a partner you're still wildly in love with or someone you've grown apart from. Open up, opening up mail from your dream school or your safety net school. Hearing back from your dream job or the job you applied to to make your parents happy or make ends meet. Traveling the world or staying in the same neighborhood or maybe even the same house where you grew up. Notice that your answer was not only always the thing that you care about most, but probably also the thing that got you most out of your comfort zone. 
because the funny thing in life is that these two things tend to go hand in hand. To get or keep something that you care about means that you're eventually going to have to get out of your comfort zone and take risks. Think of it like a test. It's the universe seeing if you really have the conviction to make your highest reality your lived reality. Anything worth getting in life has its challenges along the way and is probably only worth getting because of those challenges. You can't have glory without first experiencing adversity. Finally attaining it, whatever it is, is a testament that you lived up to those challenges, that you learned along the way, that you kept going despite the hurdles that you inevitably faced along the way. It's a sign of growth. But the flip side is that your fears will absolutely cripple you if you don't face them. Because for as much good as fear can bring into our lives, it can bring just as much tribulation. There's no point in knowing that we care about something if we're too afraid to take the risks that come with pursuing and maintaining it. There's no point in knowing who your crush is if you're too afraid to talk to them. Or in knowing what your true passions and desires are if you're too afraid to pursue them. There's no point in knowing who you are or who you're meant to be if you're too afraid to take the steps to be and become those versions of yourself. But let's back up a second. If you weren't listening closely, you might make fear the villain in all of these scenarios. I'll give you a hint, it isn't. So what is? It's our reaction to feeling fear, never fear itself. And that applies to all emotions. Negative emotions are never what attract negativity into our lives. It's our reaction to them. And despite it being an overwhelmingly popular practice, labeling something as negative and pushing it away for the sake of positive vibes and thoughts only is one of the worst reactions that we can have to our emotions. In fact, our attachment to positivity and positive emotions can bring about just as much, if not more, negativity into our lives as negative emotions. The trick, like I've been saying in pretty much all my videos so far, is to face the emotion head on and to respond to it accordingly without any attachment to the outcome. It's our attachment to things, both material and immaterial, that we have to work to overcome. Because the, because the presence of any form of attachment is a sign that we're not fully accepting what is. It's a sign that we're not surrendering, which St Stephen Baitler of Free Yoga TV defines simply as letting what is be. Attachment is a telltale sign of ego, and ego is the root of all suffering. By the way, if you don't know who Stephen Baitler is, you should totally check him out. He teaches amazing yoga classes on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts with you guys. Next week, I'm going to move away from the topic of fear and talk to you guys a little bit about somatization. So make sure to tune back in if that interests you or if you have no, no idea what it is but would like to know. I promise you guys, it's really interesting stuff. If you like this video, please hit that like button. I really appreciate it and it lets me know that you guys are like the content that I'm putting out. And if any part of what I said resonated with you guys, then please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing the video so that it can reach more people. Also, comment down below what fears are keeping you guys from making your highest reality your lived reality. One of the reasons I wanted to start doing YouTube was to create and hold a space where we could have conversations about topics like this and where we could learn, share, be inspired, and connect with each other. Each other. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say and thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.